Yes, so I'm, I'm Thor Lilqvist. I'm going to speak about LibreOffice or CollaborOffice as an app on iOS. I work for, or I'm a contractor for Collabora Productivity. First, some stuff about the company, but you probably know that already. And some history of this effort uh, to build LibreOffice for some mobile operating, operating system, you first need to cross-compile it. And uh, the work to enable that was started like back in 2011 already. <coughs> and the platforms that it was uh, targeted for were iOS, Android, and also cross-compiling to Windows was tried. Initially, this was just mostly something done in my spare time, and there weren't really any concrete plans on, on to uh, get some actual product out of it. And uh, cross-compilation efforts for Windows was supposed to make it easier to build LibreOffice for Windows, but there were all kinds of problems with that, and eventually we didn't uh, continue that effort anymore. Then back in 2014, there was this company called Cloudon, if you remember them. They had an app for, for iOS that included some was it file sharing and whatever, and they needed to be able to also edit documents locally on an iOS device. And they funded this work for some time, but then they got acquired and their plans changed that, and that didn't then work out very nicely. Around the same time, uh, we at Collabora started working on LibreOffice Online, and this introduced this tiled rendering idea where a client or, well, some code can ask LibreOffice to render the view of a document like as rectangular tiles, pixel maps. That's what, that is what, what is used in the, the online. We send these tiles to the client as PNGs, basically. <clears throat> and for iOS, we had only a very bare-bones test application or app that was kept working, but really not much work was done on improving it. Then Jan Iversen started working on a new app in 2017, uh, but that did not get finished either. Then last year, we made a fresh start when Michael had this idea to reuse this um, LibreOffice Online JavaScript user interface also in, an, in a mobile app. And that actually turned out to work quite nicely and wasn't even very hard to get working in initially. And this has also been funded by Adfinis. Thank you to Nicholas there. <laughs> uh, something about this cross compilation of LibreOffice code. <coughs> uh, the basic, or one basic thing is that we run the configure script twice automatically, one for the build platform and one for the target or host platform. And for the build platform, that's then macOS for iOS and, and Linux, for instance, for Android. We only build the build time tools that are necessary to uh, process these IDL files, for instance, and, and generate code. And uh, when building cross-compiling for iOS or Android, uh, we don't build any dynamic libraries as we do for the desktop platforms, but only static archives. 
The main reason for this originally was that on iOS you were not allowed to even load your own dynamic libraries. I think that has changed in the meantime, but we still do it this way anyway. And also on Android, you could load your own own, stat, own shared object, but objects, but the runtime linker had some very silly restrictions, and no way could it manage with the, the hundreds of of shared libraries that LibreOffice wants to load. <coughs> and when cross compiling, we don't do any unit testing, which of course is a bit sad, but it isn't really possible to do it. Instead, what could be done, done is to uh, make an app that includes source code from unit tests, and when you run that app, it performs the, sm the unit testing. And we actually have one, one very small such, such app already in the online repo. Uh, the core repository doesn't contain any, any app source code at the moment. Well, there is Jan Iversen's LibreOffice Lite still, but uh, uh, it's not built normally. And LibreOffice Kit, as you might know, is this mostly C-like API that is supposed to be very simple to use, simpler than you and know. And uh, it was in it initially used only for loading files and saving files in possibly different formats and used, for instance, by some conversion tools and things like that. Or Miklos, am I remembering wrong, but it used for other things also initially. Uh, <laughs> but then when this tiled rendering idea arrived, uh, this was added to LibreOffice Kit also. And uh, LibreOffice Online, as you know, it's a server client thing where the server part then has uh, several processes. There is one master process WSD, WebSocket daemon, it stands for, and there is one broker process, and then there are for each document that is being edited, there is a separate kit process. And the kit name comes from LibreOffice kit, of course. And it's only these kit processes that uh, use LibreOffice kit, actually. And uh, these kit processes are then strictly isolated. They run in their own CH root so that you can't even accidentally see any information from somebody else's documents and so on. And then the client in the browser uses lots of JavaScript and the communication between these, the client and the server uses WebSockets. Uh, WebSockets is a, an API that all browsers implement that allows you to uh, send message based uh, or send messages from, from the client to the server and and get replies back. And also because it was easy to do it, like to use that for also for, for the inter-process communication, it, used, it is used also for this, between these processes. <clears throat> now then, when, if you want to combine this into a mobile app that runs standalone on the, on the mobile device, uh, you need all the relevant parts of the C++ code of the server, and you need some, some platform-specific code that uses the mobile platform's own, own APIs to do whatever is needed. And then you need uh, JavaScript bits. Uh, <clears throat> the platform-specific specific code is actually not that much, maybe some thousand lines or so, or even less. And uh, the server code in C++ 
we actually don't need all of it in our app, only uh, parts here and there, and there is a bit of if def spaghetti in there to, to filter out only those bits that are actually needed in the app. But it's not too bad. And these uh, JavaScript parts, then they run in a WebKit web view. Mm. I think Android also has WebKit, yes. Yeah, so it's, it should be mostly compatible with both, both iOS and Android. On iOS, these web view uh, things actually run in separate processes, but that is not really that visible to the, in the API. Uh, and then when this uh, C++ code needs to communicate with the JavaScript code, if you compare to the online case there, there the server sends these uh, WebSocket messages and the JavaScript receives them and replies with also with WebSocket messages. In the app case, uh, they go through this native code layer that, that when, uh, when the native code needs to do something or send something to the JavaScript parts, it asks the web view to uh, execute one line of JavaScript code, typically. That then invokes a, a function. And from, that, from there on, it continues as if it would have received it in a WebSocket message. And uh, what in the, in the online server, where you have these separate processes that send messages to each other, in the app, they run mostly at, as different threads, and instead of sending any messages through some system IPC mechanism, they just, we just have this simple buffering system where they add a message to a the data, data structure and the other thread notices that and, and takes it from there. And uh, we didn't want to do any, any large scale code changes to the online C++ code, so these, we call them fake web, fake web sockets, make it, make the code look more or less the same. And uh, if you want to create a similar app for, for other platforms, like mainly Android, the same basic idea should work. You just need to write this platform-specific code in, in Java instead of, of Objective-C. And also, as an example and experiment, I wrote one for GTK+. Plus and, uh, it was also actually quite, quite easy. The, the API that GTK Plus and WebKit offers is, in theory, quite close to the one that you have on iOS. You can execute one line of JavaScript and you get callbacks when, when the JavaScript calls some spe specific function. Then how is this iOS app actually built? Well, it's built in an Xcode project, and uh, all these <coughs> sorry, all these static libraries that we build in LibreOffice Core, they are listed in, in a file, and then in the Xcode project we just pass this this file to the linker, and it looks through all these libraries and picks what it needs. And uh, as we don't use any dynamic li linking on these platforms, we have a map that's built at build time that maps these uh, uh, comp UNO component names or constructor names to function pointers. There is a Python script that generates these maps and that then uh, decides what's, what gets linked in, basically. 
and uh, typically if you when you run run the app and if you invoke some functionality that hasn't been invoked earlier you will notice that ah uh -huh, now it it needs some component that isn't actually linked in then you need to update this this python script and and link it again and then it should work and all these uh, configuration files, uh, translations, all the XML files, RC files, etc. They are mostly as in a normal LibreOffice in a very similar structure. And I thought I would go through the code a bit. Let's see if I can switch to the Oh, why didn't it switch? Oh, yeah, I have to first exit this one. Well, I'll start by showing the initialisa initialization stuff, uh, where we initialize the logging and language and locale stuff, and we download some templates if necessary, and we start the kit and so on. So here are my now in this, um, can you see this? Is it large enough? Yeah. In the online online repository and in the iOS slash mobile directory. And here this app delegate. File is the one that does the initialization. Oh. Here is something related to templates. And then the actual app starts in this function. The application did finish launching with options. And it does some logging initialization and some language stuff. And this, this here is related to the template feature. Then it calls the LibreOffice Git initialization functions. And then it starts a thread. This is the Objective C way to start a thread asynchronously. And here it creates this LOL WSD object, which corresponds to the WSD process in the online case. And it runs it, and when it, once it has run it, it just loops back and creates one more. Uh, when, when the app starts, you first see like a do document browse, browser that shows your documents in iCloud or on your device or in some other storage extension system. And that this actually is provided by the system. We didn't need to code anything for that. And then when you select the document to edit, it creates a document object and, and a controller for that and stuff like that, mostly uninteresting details. Mm. And uh, when it creates this web, web kit, web view, it shows in that view an HTML page that corresponds to the one that is shown for an online session also. And it gets past the document URL and the UI language. And what time is it, by the way? Five minutes left. Oh, wow. And uh, in this file, document.mm, you can also find this send to, send to GS, JS code. That's the one that executes this JavaScript uh, expression. And uh, here, you, <laughs> this is one thing that should be improved. As we can't send any binary data, we have to uh, base64 encode everything and 
Then actually when we are sending a PNG tile, we first base64 encoded it, encode it, and then the receiving end decodes it, but then it encodes it again to be able to use it as a, a data URL for the tile. Uh, and that file contains uh, the code for the callback in the other direction, the things that receive the messages that the JavaScript part sends. And yeah, that's actually it. So, any questions? Yeah? You mean like the code size? What should I say? It's like some hundred megabytes. Sorry? Yeah. And actually, you have how much time now? Four minutes. Okay. Yeah, I will show you how it works <laughs> if you if you have time. Does it show the whole screen? No, for some reason not. Let's try again. Oh, for some reason it doesn't show the whole screen or oh, it does, so it is there, okay. So here is the application. And um, this here is the File browser, here you see what I have in my, on my iCloud drive. And here is a sample document. And this all looks, looks very much like LibreOffice Online. Uh, you, you get the same, the same menu bar up there. And uh, you can select stuff and use all these normal functionality or type into it and so on. Mm. I probably should not point out the obvious, obvious improvement that needs to be made, but as you see, one, one thing is that the on-screen keyboard pops up very eagerly and that should be fixed. And there is my dog. <laughs> and I think that's a good thing to st stop, st stop it. <laughs> oh? okay, so thank you.